Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, we did a bunch of questing as usual, but most notably, we did Monkey Madness, we got 60 attack, and as you can see, we have now equipped the Dragon Scimitar. Then we also trained crafting up, we got the Amulet of Strength, and I kind of set out a goal last video of getting 61 crafting, and we sort of started that, but I want to get that goal done today along with a lot of other things. Right now though, I am well overdue for farm runs, birdhouse runs, seaweed run, all that stuff. So let's go do those and then we'll get into questing and crafting and other things. Well, I guess now that we're done with the rune sword, I may as well give that to Spook because I think she's just been using the Addy Scimitar from the feud quest. So now she has that, I've, I've given her all this stuff right here. So she'll be set once she gets 60 attack as well. Oh, first ever Hispori seed. Wait, can we even plant that? Spori is level 65, which makes sense because because that is the middle tier of the farming guild, but that is at least a new collection log slot. Man, I'm still not used to everything being able to attack me, this freaking feral vampire. He's taken many hardcore lives. I finally used up pretty much all the willow saplings that we had, so I just went ahead and planted all the maple seeds that I had. I had no idea I had 18 of them, but for the payment for them, we need baskets of oranges. So what we're gonna do is withdraw 17 baskets and then run over here to the charter ship. And then here they have 10 oranges in stock, which we can buy for pretty much nothing. We're gonna fill up two baskets and then hop worlds. And then we'll trade again, buy 10 more, fill it up, hop worlds again. And uh, we'll do this for at least a couple inventories. But speaking of oranges, here's a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Casetify, which you can see by all these scrambled letters on this box I just got in the mail. Oh, this packaging is beautiful. It looks like a little gift. It looks like a box of chocolates almost actually. <laughs> Casetify is very serious about recycling. Their packaging is 100% recycled materials and the phone cases themselves are 65% recycled materials and plant-based materials too. And here's the first look at it. They sent me four phone cases. They have so many different designs on their website and you could even customize stuff too. And it looks like they actually, <laughs> they actually did this. <laughs> I love it. So here's the four designs that I picked out. I customized these two. So there's the DN one and there's the Mudkip one. You can write whatever text on there. There's different colors, different types of fonts. And then I got this one because, uh, you know, Halloween's coming up, so I want it to be kind of spooky. And then penguins because penguins are my favorite animal. They have two new kinds of cases, the impact cases and the ultra impact cases. You can see with the ultra, they have these little things on the side here. Uh, these are approved to be safe if you drop it from 6.6 .6 feet. And the ultra impact is 9.8 feet drop test approved. And these little bumpers that they have on the ultra impact cases, this is called Cheetah. Case Defy impact and ultra impact cases are 100% BPA free, non-toxic and non-hazardous. And they feature the Defensify, which is their antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria and prevents bacteria from even growing or sticking to the case in the first place. The phone just actually feels like it stays in my hand though. Like with my old phone case, I feel like it could slide out pretty easily, but the case defy case just feels like it's just gonna actually stay in my hand. With the release of the new iPhone 13, Casetify has you covered, or your new phone covered, that is. Or it could also just make a great gift for friends or family. So go to casetify.com slash wildmudkip to get 15% off on your new favorite phone case. And thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring this video. 50 farming over halfway to 99. Wow, what are the odds of running into you here? Small Gilnor, eh? Oh, that was a, wait, that was a task for the diary. Didn't even know that was coming up. I kind of want to do the Rock Medium Diary so that way we can get the GE teleport unlocked, which is really close to a bank. Because I don't exactly have a really close bank teleport. And I think the only requirement that we're missing for this is a Soul's Bane. So let's go do that quest. Wow, that's crazy how high it can hit now. Ever since we got Monkey Badness done, my character has just turned into a beast apparently. <gasps> oh, it's not even Halloween yet. Scared me. Dude, this plugin is doing the same thing it did during the Evil Dave section of RFD where it just knew like what the answer was. It's like hacking into the code. It just it, it just knows which wall you're supposed to search. Oh dude, if the plugin has the answers for this room too and it just tells you which of these beasts to attack, oh my god. It oh my this plugin's so insane. This is just Runelight, by the way, and if you didn't know, every single plugin within Runelight as well as OS Buddy are fully compliant with Jagex's rules. For most people, this is like them trying to get out of bed, but for me, this is like this is Spook trying to drag me away from the computer to get into bed. <laughs> no, don't take me. I I refuse to leave. No one understands me. Gosh. And there is a soul's bane completed. 
which doesn't really give us anything, but we get the ability to go down here into Tolna's Rift, which is the rock medium task. Man, the cash stack's been taking so many hits lately, and you have to take another hit right here. You just gotta do it for the diary. Oh boy, here's gonna be another one. We have to recolor a new kitten, but in order to get one, we have to not have a cat on us or have an overgrown one. Um, but by putting one in a menagerie, that will count as us not having one. So I guess we're gonna spend 30k GP to build a menagerie. And we'll build the pet house space. There's the basic oak one. Put the cat in there. Oh, con level. Put the heck cat in there, and now we can do the task. Drill sergeant random done, and we got a piece of the camo outfit. I mean, <laughs> wait, where'd the top of my head go? I needed some limpert for one of the rock tasks, and apparently just picking the limperts was also a candoran task. Look at me being macro efficient. Oh, look at these two cute group Iron Man. Yo, this music track we just unlocked though, called Milady. Here we go, this is the end of the stronghold of security. Now, we all know the obvious answer that you're supposed to pick, and if you don't pick this right answer, then you are probably the biggest degenerate in RuneScape. You're obviously supposed to take the fighting boots. Now we have unlocked all four emotes, so we'll do all four of those, and that is the diary task. Then our last task is just to get an assignment from Vanika. Luckily, we didn't have a Slayer task already, and there we go, we can claim the reward now. So we'll teleport to Varak. And I will put all the rewards up on screen. There's really nothing too notable on this as well. There's really not too much important stuff with a lot of these easy and medium lower tier diaries. Um, but the main reason, like I said, why I want to do this is because we can now cast the GE teleport, or if we configure this, we can change the left click to be the GE teleport. So when we teleport, it's gonna take us straight here, which is very close to a bank. I think this is probably the closest teleport to a bank that we have unlocked now. Uh, and then of course the XP lamp. It's going to go into Herblore, has to be at least level 40, which we do have. That is 7.5k XP, putting us nearly at 45 Herblore. We got 44. One really cool thing about the GE teleport, besides being close to a bank, is that it's also now my closest teleport to a spirit tree, because it's right up here. Previously, it was the Arty Cloak, but that's kind of a run from that spirit tree. But this one's relatively close, and it's going to help a lot for doing the farm runs. And for once we start Slayer, it's pretty close to Neve 2 before we get Slayer Rings and NPC Contact. And on the topic of teleporting, we need to buy more Law Runes because the stack is dangerously low right now, being at 56. Just spent about 120k buying a little variety of runes, and now the cash stack is below 200k. <laughs> Oh no. Today, I want to get 61 crafting, and we started working on this last video. Uh, here's all the molten glass that we currently have, 1k. Uh, the amount that we need in total is going to be 3.2k, so we need 2.2k more molten glass. We made all the soda ash in the last video, so the only thing we need now is the buckets of sand. We need 2.2k uh, more buckets of sand, which I guess means we should buy the rest of these bucket packs here. In the last video, we did Anakra's Lament to unlock the camulet, and we stocked up on the Uktanki camel. Dunk, so we are set for charges on that. This is my first time using it actually on the account. It'll take us straight over here, which also is a medium task for the Desert Diary. And then once we climb out of here, we are uh, pretty close to the quarry right down over here. So uh, we'll get the mining XP tracker up, hop worlds, and then start working on getting those 2.2k buckets of sand. I just spent a little bit over an hour mining and we now have more than enough sand that we need. I probably should have brought the money with me but I guess I'll have to make an extra trip for that. Flame, sand, oh God, we're spending so much money, 2,200 or below 100K GP now. We are done mining. Uh, you can see we got a couple mining levels out of that, and now we are going to be making all the bucks of sand and soda ash into the molten glass. By the way, the reason why I wanna get 61 crafting is for lunar diplomacy. That's one of the requirements. Uh, so we did just end up making all the molten glass. You can see it took like an hour and a half or something. We have 3.2k molten glass, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to wait till later when I need to AFK while I'm eating dinner. So for now, we are going to get back to questing. I was looking at some more quests to do while we were making molten glass. And I think we'll start with Taibo Wanai Trio for today. I was about to go get an iron spear because we need iron spear or better for the quest. But I was looking in the bank and somehow I have a mithril spear already from something. So I'm glad we have that. And we can't actually make our own spear until after we do Taibo Wanai Trio. So it would otherwise be a little bit annoying to get. Just collecting Swamp Toads to make the Agility Potions and that is an easy task for the Western Provinces Diary. And then we need to make three of these Agility Potions because we each need four doses. And if we just make one potion, that's only three doses. So by making three of them, we can... Oh, <laughs> I know that was coming either. By making three of them, we could decant these. So now we have two 
four of those potions, and I'll toss the other one in the group storage for Spook, so that way she can do the quest. Also, 45 herb lore super attacks, which are very, very nice to make because the secondary is just super easy to get. I'm going to hold on to this one dose of jelly potion in the bank just in case me or Spook accidentally drink one of the doses because that would be a pretty easy mistake to make. Dang, dude, I think this guy's put more hours into group Iron Man than I have at this point. Fishing a Karambwan, medium task. Okay, here is the end of Taibo Wanai Trio. We can now fish the Karambwans. We get these XP rewards, but we have to actually claim them. Okay, so this guy teaches us how to properly cook the Karambwans because previously they would have just been like the poisonous ones. And then we get 5k fishing XP. And then this guy gives us 5k cooking XP. And then Tamayu is going to give us the attack and strength XP. And then we also need to trade this guy while we're here because we can buy the spears here. So buy the iron spear. I'm not sure if it has to be like clean for the quest. That's a good alk and you lose it during the quest. I don't know if it has to be clean or not, but I'll just clean it for her. So that way she can use the iron spear for the quest. And then this rune spear will probably end up alking or something. It's 12k right there. Wait, dude, check this out. Check out the little move my guy does. <laughs> they just like moonwalks to the side like that. <laughs> Who came up with these animations, dude? This is great. Wait, one more time, one more time. <laughs> Zanuck has been saved. Yay, everyone's excited and cheering, and that is the end of another slice of ham. Then we're just gonna ride the train over to Keldegrim for a Lumbee Hard Diary. To skip past all these wall traps, all we gotta do is click on the minimap, and then it's gonna automatically guide us through them. And we're doing Ichthlerin's Little Helper, by the way. Ichthlerin's Little Helper is done, you get some XP, and uh, this is a requirement for a few other quests as well. So we'll go do the next quest in the series, or one of the next quests in the series, uh, Contact. Ah, uh, yes, Maisa, she has a very convincing disguise must be business casual. Hey, it looks like we can take the carpet to Sofinem now. I guess we unlocked a new form of transportation. What is this guy doing? He's using runite bolts. <laughs> okay, might have to teleport out. I'm actually kind of struggling with this fight here. Okay, yeah, wait, let's go. That's so annoying because it's such a far run to get back to. Nice, easy. We got this mage stuck behind here so he can't hit us. And the scarab goes down. And we got the Karis now. And then before we go and finish the quest, there was a diary task to defeat a Locust Rider using a Karis. So here we go for the hard task. Ooh, blood runes. There's contact quest done. We get an XP lamp that we can put into two combat skills. Uh, these are the options. I'm gonna put them into range because I feel like that's probably gonna be like the slowest one for us to get up. So 7K XP and then another 7K XP. So we got from 40 to 43 range. And by completing this quest, we unlocked the bank, which is actually going to be really useful for once we start doing Pyramid Plunder eventually. Next quest that's part of the series is A Tale of Two Cats. Guy's just looking out of his window. Don't mind me, I'm just going to come by with some like heavy duty shears for sheep and I'll just uh, just chop some of that off. Yeah, don't mind me, you're you're looking good now, man, looking good. A little, little bit more. Yeah, it's just a little bit more off the top, perfect. How does he not see me, dude? Oh, by the way, I'm taking a little bit of a break from um, Tale of Two Cats because I have to wait like half an hour for the plants to grow, so. Uh, doing rat catchers in the meantime, today's just a very catty day. Are you kidding me? He just teleported from there. Oh my God. Is that it? That wasn't that bad. I don't know what all the hubbub is about this quest. It's not that bad. Oh, wait, we just got a, a magic level 60 magic from teleporting. Oh, I love this cutscene. Very relatable too. <laughs> She's just being a backseat driver to him. Yo, me and who though at Spook Dog at Spook Dog. Tale of two cats complete. We get a mysterious present. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, wow. Two antique lamps. I'm kind of stuck between prayer and herb lore. I'm not sure. Eh, we'll just do herb lore. And 2.5k XP. No level though. Let's go finish Rat Catchers. Okay, dude, this guy's name is Smokin' Joe, and we have to give him Pot of Weeds. This was definitely done on purpose. Wipe some phlegm from the corner of his mouth. I'm trying to smoke these pesky rats out. Oh, the rats are in on it too? Oh, let's freaking go, dude. Rat Catchers is done, and it unlocks a new form of transportation. We can now use the Rat Pits teleports, which if you didn't know, it actually gives you multiple options. I can't do it right now, but there's four options with it. You can teleport to Port's Rim, Artie, Varrock, or Keldegrim. I think that's about all the cat quests for today, so now we'll do another animal 
quest, we'll do Scorpion Catcher. I'll show you the teleports now so you get these four options for the rat pits. But right now we are going to teleport to the Berthorp Games Room and go to the Rogue's Den because I've been running around for all these quests and it's really annoying running out of run. I know we do have some marks of grace, so we can at least buy like one or two pieces of the outfit. So every little bit will help. I guess I probably should have got some of the Boots of Lightness too. That'd probably help, huh? We have 96 mod marks of grace from the little mini agility grind we did before. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and buy the Graceful Legs and the Hood. And it's two new collection lock slots too. And they made it so that each piece individually gives you extra run restoration when you're standing still. Because previously you had to have the full outfit to get that perk, but each piece adds up a little bit. And of course it gives us negative weight. By the way, just as a little side note, uh, the clip I recorded of me finishing Rat Catchers with that quest completion screen, that was the 1,000th clip I recorded for this series. Just wanted to share that. Scorpion Catcher is done. It's a pretty Pretty pointless quest, but uh, Thormac here will now. Oh, we got strength level. Thormac will now allow us to make battle stabs into mystic stabs, um, which probably isn't too useful, but there is at least one or maybe just only one stash unit that does require a mystic staff. Oh, hey, it's 1200 total level. Very slowly, we've been using up a bunch of anti poison while going through all these different quests. And we just happened to stop by here, so I figure may as well stock up on anti-poison. Hopefully this should last a while. You can just buy regular anti-poison, but this stuff's a lot better. This is the good stuff. There's making history quest, and with this quest done, you're able to do the hot and cold clue steps for master clues. He gives you like the strange device or whatever. <gasps> Look at the eagles, America. No way, I can't believe they featured me in a quest again. Okay, this text that just appeared in the chat box reminded me of a riddle. What's brown and sticky? A stick. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. There, he just hit my birth year. Mountain Daughter is complete. Uh, we get the bear head, which I mean, oh, prayer level. Oh, it's eagle eye too, nice. Um, for me, it's just fashion skate, but I know peers use this. I'll show you the stats because it gives defense bonuses. And even if you're one defense, you can equip this. Ooh, this is a pretty important hunter level right here because at 44, we can now upgrade to doing maple bird houses instead of doing the teak bird houses I've been doing. This eagle's like guarding the nest and it kind of reminds me of that one meme of like the guy who's uh, like being a bouncer in front of a party or whatever. <laughs> also more eagles, hell yeah, America. There is Eagle's Peak done. Uh, back in 2018, they made it so that you need to do this quest to be able to use box traps. So we could do that now, and we could use the Eagle transportation system to get some diary tasks done. There's the Fremnic task. God, this would be terrifying. <laughs> There's the desert task, and there's the Western provinces task. Spook needs steel nails for something right now, so hopefully we have some in the bank that we can give to her yet. She needs 15. There we go. Oh, I love penguins so much. It's so cool you get to be a penguin in the quest, and then like if you run, then you slide on your belly. Penguins are so cute. Man, ping and pong are my spirit animals. Wow, what a surprise. I'm staff bashing yet again. Here we go, Cold War quest is complete. Now I'm going to channel my inner penguin and steer off into the distance on the iceberg while pondering the intricacies of life. After many, many milliseconds of pondering, I've decided it is finally time to go do one small favor. I feel like we have enough teleports unlocked at this point where it shouldn't be that terrible, I guess. In the past, it's always taken me like an hour, just over an hour to do the quest, so... Let's have at it then. Ah, and so it begins. It's only one small favor. How bad could it be? This monster totally rocks. Look, I made it on top of the Sears rooftop course with only 54 agility. You can't even boost plus six. You need 60 agility to even be up here. How do I do it? You may as well just call me Rendy. The end of one small favor. It ended up taking about an hour and 10 minutes, so it wasn't too bad. Pretty easy, pretty chill. We get two 10K XP lamps. I really want to use them on prayer, but I also really want to use them on herb lore, and I feel like no matter which one I pick, I'm going to regret it. I, I could split it up, but if I'm going to go with one skill, I may as well be confident with that and go with that same skill twice. So we're going to put two of them into herb lore. Uh, we now have 48 herb lore. I think we started with 45. We can make Guthix rests. We get the steel key ring, which will free up some bank space. It allows us to put a bunch of different keys on there. Dude, I think my quest points just glitched or something because when we finished Cold War, we had 197 and then we were supposed to get two quest points from this. And I want to go for 200 quest points today. Let me try Hopping Worlds and see if that changes anything. Hop Worlds and 
Okay, there's 199, that's weird. We were one quiz point away though from being at 200. And I just finished getting head, or getting ahead. Uh, that is 200 quest points, some crafting XP to help with the crafting grind we're gonna be doing in a little bit. Construction XP, and just 200 quest points look so clean. Group Iron Man came out October 6th, and today is October 18th. So uh, 12 days, not even two weeks of Group Iron Man. And this is where we're at. I think we can fit in one more quest today. We're doing the Hosidius quest right now, the Depths of Despair, and we unlocked the Crab Claw Cave, which basically has a bunch of sand crab spots that not a lot of people go to because it's locked behind the quest, which isn't really a high requirement quest at all. I guess people just either don't know about it or don't want to put any extra effort in. There is Depths of Despair done. We got the Favor Certificate, which will give us 10% more favor in Hosidius. And then, oh, we got this page we got to add to the book. Oh, we got a jelly level from the quest. Add the page into there. And we now have the Hosidius teleport unlocked. Okay, there's one more quest that we're going to do. We started Fremnik Isles the other day, but we couldn't finish it because we didn't have the proper gear or stats for the final boss. But I think mainly because we have the Dragon Scimitar now, I think we'll be able to do this. Well, here's the setup going in for the final fight of Fremnik Isles. I refuse to buy any of the RFD gloves until we get Barrow's gloves, especially considering my whole cash stack right now is only like 80k. Okay, let's start going. Yes, we have taken down the Ice Troll King. Let's decapitate him. Oh god, don't watch. We can choose any melee combat skill to get 10k XP in. Definitely not hit points. I guess strength probably makes the most sense. We need 55 defense to equip the Nezi, so it's tempting to put into defense, but I guess I'll just get some strength XP and some more strength XP. And then he gives us the Helm of Nate is not. You saw that all those XP drops right there. That is the end of Fremnik Isles. Oh, well, let's see if we got any levels. Strength, construction. I really wish we could equip this because like we'd look so cool if we could with like the torso and the rune legs and everything, but at least we have it for now. That's gonna look nice and clean in the gear tab. And I guess it's time to start training crafting then. Have all of our molten glass right in here. Let's do a price check real quick before we start blowing all this, but 3.2k molten glass. It's going to be enough to get us to 61 crafting. There's really only two options of things I should be making. Uh, we can't craft the light orbs, but it's between these two. The lantern lenses have no use, but they give 55 XP, whereas the unpowered orbs give 52.5 XP. So it's just slightly less XP, but these actually have a use if you want to power them into orbs and then make battle stabs later on. So I'll just be making them into the orbs. And yeah, with that said, I'm going to start eating dinner and AFK. One more. There it is. 61 crafting. That is the crafting level that we need for Lunar Diplomacy, which we don't have all the requirements for yet, but that's one more knocked out of the way. And just look at that chat box. It's so satisfying. It's uh, seven level up messages in there. So I guess today we start at 50, right? So we went from 50 to 61 crafting. Uh, we do still have some molten glass left over too. I'm gonna head over to Barbarian Fishing now and probably just AFK fish for the rest of the night. Still need to get agility up. Only one more level actually for Regicide. I went back to check and this video we started out with 177 quest points and now we're up to over 200. We have 202 quest points. And then Spook's been working on getting the requirements for Hero's Quest, which she has now. So then tomorrow, or next video, uh, we are going to be doing Hero's Quest. And speaking of what she's been working on, if you want to see what Spook's been up to on her half of the progress, you can check out her YouTube channel, which is linked in every video description. Her vids are a little bit less frequent than mine currently are. Um, she usually has at least a couple days of progress per video, whereas I've been uploading every day since uh, Group Iron Man came out. And then as for the duo Group Iron Man high scores, we have once again created a a new all-time high for us for rank. We are rank 39. That puts us on page two of the duo group Iron Man high scores. I swear it's like every single night when I check this page again, we've moved up more and more. Like I know every day when we wake up, we've lost a few ranks overnight, but it's like at the end of each night when I check, we're further or higher up than we were the night before, and it's so sick, dude. Second friggin' page. As for the stats, we reached over 1200 total level, and then for the time played and all the stuff on this page, you can check it out. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again tomorrow.